In today's video, I wanted to talk about some problems that I've noticed in my garden that maybe some of you guys have also experienced and how I want to approach them. And hopefully throughout this video, some of the problems that I point out might trigger some ideas of things that you might be experiencing. And without further ado, let's start with this tree right behind me. So this part of the garden has been sort of trailing along very slowly this season. And I've been trying to rack my brain why, and I've come to the conclusion that it has everything to do with the sun, and more importantly, it has everything to do with trees and shrubs blocking the sun from getting to this garden. So this part of the garden actually right now has some sun, it's noon, but it got zero sun up until noon. So from the morning up till 10, 11 p or a.m., this side of the garden gets absolutely no sun. And in fact, you probably can't even see my potato bed right here because it's not getting any sun. And these potatoes are, oh, maybe six inches tall. So the solution to this problem is that that tree right there is coming out entirely. It's non-native, non-productive. And it also gives me the opportunity to actually expand my asparagus bed all the way back to that wall, which I'm extremely excited about. These hedges over here are gonna get a big haircut. And over here out of the shot is this huge jacaranda tree that that's a little bit TBD. I'm not sure how I'm gonna deal with that one yet. But basically as you build your garden throughout the seasons, you might notice that all the trees around it are starting to grow much more vigorously. That's because their roots can go out quite a distance. So as this garden has been getting watered, as it's been getting fertility, all these trees and shrubs and everything around it have also been benefiting from that. So while that is kind of good, it's also starting to create some problems here because I built this garden so I could get vegetables to eat, not to grow shrubs for privacy. So that needs to go, this needs to go, but just pay attention to your surroundings. You might be surprised by what's growing around your garden. This next item on the list is something that I say I'm gonna work on every single season, which is taking out plants that shouldn't be in the garden any longer. And this right here is a classic example of one of my nemesis. It is the rapini or broccoli rob. And the reason why I call this my nemesis is because I've tried to grow this so many times. Every single time it bolts and I never get to eat anything. But this is right now at this point, like it's already flowered. It's even making seed pods. So at this point, it's literally doing nothing for me or even the bees. And I'm just wasting space, water, resources. So I really need to be better about coming around and pruning out all these plants that no longer do anything in the garden. And especially when they're covered in disease like powdery mildew and bacteria infested tomatoes. Like those should be out of the ground as soon as they start becoming a major disease issue rather than me waiting for that last tomato. The real beauty here is that nothing goes to waste when you have chickens. For the next item on the agenda, I'm in here in my potted sort of tree and bush zone. And what I have in front of me is a bear's lime, forte avocado, and right behind me is this pomegranate, which is I believe a red silk. And anyway, the reason why we're here is because one thing that I've been slipping on, I know this is a very common problem for a home gardener, is fertilizing your trees at the right time and doing it frequently enough. So in this case, we're coming into the tail end of winter, going into early spring. And this is when, as you could see, this avocado is starting to put out new leaves. This lime is absolutely covered in flowers. The pomegranate behind me erupting in leaves. So right now what they're telling us is we need nutrients and we need them now because we are growing and we don't want to slow down. So what I'm going to do here is show you guys how to do it and also do it because this is something I really need to be changing this year. So I'm gonna scratch off maybe the top inch of soil here, and I'm gonna do a half a pot at a time. Reach in here, take some of this espoma, citrus, and avocado food, and just sort of sprinkle it on top and rough it in with my fingers. And then I'll come back, push that soil right on top of it, and then go back on this other side and do the same thing. So what we're doing here is we're making sure it's buried under the soil so that next time when I come by and water this, which will actually be right after this, this soil is going to get wet, it's going to soak into that fertilizer, and that fertilizer is going to soak into it, and these tree roots are able to get it. So you really want to make sure that you're not just sprinkling it on top, but you bury it in. But this is something that I should be doing to all my trees at every turn of the season. So whenever you see your trees really starting to grow very quickly, like having a lot of blooms and buds developing, it's generally a good time to actually fertilize. 
So on to thing number four. We're standing next to this rat's nest of uh, hoses, adapters, timers, drips, all sorts of situations. <laughs> and that brings me to the point of irrigation. Bringing water to your plants is critical. It's essential. They won't grow without water, especially in San Diego. If they're waiting on the rain, they're gonna be waiting a long time, let's just say that. But basically what I have here is, I did actually bring up a mainline PVC here before I only had a hose that was like 50 feet away from there. <laughs> that was a whole nother nightmare. But as I've kind of started to solve this issue, I've been trying to use these sort of cheap timers. And well, let's just say that these cheap timers, you get what you pay for. This one has already given up the ghost. It just kind of sits there. It doesn't actually time anymore. And so what happened is that I trusted it. I walked away, came back in the morning and my whole garden was flooded with water. And that's what 12 hours of drip irrigation will do is eventually they will actually give you a ton of water. So this year, I really need to focus on building a proper irrigation system. I'm looking into different timers and setups and all sorts of things like that. If anyone has any suggestions for what has worked well for them, I'd love to hear them. So this year, I really, really need to make sure that I get my irrigation and mostly my irrigation timing under control. The next problem that I've noticed in my garden is the vigor of my seedling health. And every great gardener knows that in order to have a successful garden, you need successful vegetable starts. Whether they're direct sown or transplant, you wanna make sure that they have everything they need to have a successful growth. And what I have here is a very <coughs> kind of sad, unsuccessful growth. You'll see that the state of this whole seedling area in general is um, quite dire. But what I want to show you here is this. <laughs> you can see that that seedling is bone dry. And the reason why is that when I put the seedling bench here back in the summer, it was fantastic for my peppers and tomatoes. It got full sun. They were loving it, growing great. But now as I've gotten into winter, I've noticed that this is basically the coldest part of my yard. And I have frost damage. And not only do I have frost damage, but I have wind that's really dry, that's blowing in right through here with nothing to stop it. So what's happened is that no matter how often I water these, I just can't keep the water in there. It's just simply too windy, too dry. So what I'm going to do to solve this problem is look around my garden, think about where is the most protected area for my seedlings that still gets sun. And you know, I don't want it to be totally windproof, but I can't just have the wind whipping through here, evaporating all the moisture constantly. So I'm gonna be moving the seedling area to an area over there. And actually I might be cooking up a special kind of ultimate seedling bench to solve this problem, regardless of where they are. But that's the problem here is being observant in your area, making sure that you're best utilizing the different parts of your yard. In this case, this is not the best place for my seedlings. The next thing I wanna work on this year is making sure I give all my plants the space they need. So here I have cabbages and cauliflower. With the cabbages, I went 18 inches and the cauliflower went 24. And the reason why I wanna make sure I give them enough space is that the more space you give a plant, the better chances that it's gonna be healthy. Now, there is this idea of biointensive where you wanna grow things to the point where their leaves touch, which is pretty much what this is doing. But if you overdo it, then you're gonna make these plants fight for the same water and nutrients that they would otherwise get if they were by themselves. So, things to consider about spacing is Doing close spacing isn't necessarily a bad thing. For instance, if I do these two cabbages 18 inches apart, I might get two smaller heads of cabbages. If I space them 36 inches apart, I would get two larger cabbages. And that's because they have more room to grow, so they're gonna end up being bigger in the end. Now, that might be nice if you want a big cabbage, but if you're wanting a lot of smaller cabbages throughout the season, then it's better to go a little tighter. But for tomatoes this year, I'm giving them as much space as I possibly can. I usually do 18 inches because I want to cram in every single tomato I can possibly get. But this year, I'm going to go 24 to 30 inches between each tomato because I want to try to give less disease pressure and I want to give them more opportunity to get the nutrients that they need. So I'm hoping that I might have less plants this year, but I'll have a better harvest and a healthier plant overall. So that's the tip for this one is give your plants more spacing see if they give you more in return. So there you have it. Those are some of the major issues that I've noticed in my garden this year. I hope that some of these are elucidating for you guys as well. Maybe you've run into similar issues and are trying to troubleshoot it, but it really comes down to making observations in your garden. And those observations vary from season to season. So while something might've worked really well in the spring or summer, it might not work in the different part of the year. 
So always keep eye around your garden. Try to think about different ways you could utilize different spaces. And actually this wonderful Pride of Madeira here, as much as I love it, I'm actually gonna be ripping this one out because this is also blocking all the sun from that cabbage patch I showed you guys earlier. Luckily, I have tons of Pride of Madeira around, but with that, I hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope you guys pick something up. And you might have noticed that I've had a severe slowdown in video output, but this is part of the ramp up. I'm going to be producing a lot more videos in these next coming months, especially as we get into spring. My time is freed, and I'm now about to dive back into the garden.